Hey there, it's Board Game Dave. Today we're taking a look at Seas of Havoc, a game designed by Sebastian Bernier Wong and Peter Gorniak and published by Rock Manor Games, who was kind enough to send me this preview copy a while ago. Seas of Havoc is a tactical naval combat game of deck building and worker placement for one to five players. The Kickstarter campaign for Seas of Havoc raised over $280,000 toward a goal that was one tenth of that, and you can still late pledge right now if you like what you see. In this game, you take on the role of a sea captain maneuvering your way around the Seas of Havoc, recovering ship gathering resources from nearby islands, and battling it out against your opponents with courage, cunning, and cannons. The player with the most infamy at the end of the game wins. Let's head over to the table to see how this game plays. I should first note that this is a preview copy, so the components, art, and rules are subject to change. That being said, this is what the game looks like all set up for a three-player game. Each player gets a unique captain and their own ship, each with unique abilities, upgrades, and cards which make up your own starting deck. The 6x6 grid is randomly arranged with with rocks, whirlpools, gusts, and shipwrecks. Players also get starting resources and their ships get placed randomly out on the board. Now you're ready to begin! Gameplay in Seas of Havoc takes place across two phases. In the island phase, players take turns dispatching their skiffs to take actions at nearby islands. Here you'll collect cannonballs, sails, money, upgrade your ship, scrap cards to thin your deck, claim flags which can give you a synergy bonus, and perhaps most importantly, buy new and better cards. This card market is full of cards which allow you to perform better maneuvers and firing actions, and cards are also worth points at the end of the game. These cards go directly into your hand and determine how many actions you'll get to take in the next phase. Once each player has placed all three of their skiffs, you're ready to move on to the C phase. In this phase, players take turns playing a card and resolving its effects. Most cards will allow you to sail strategically around the board to snatch up shipwrecks for bonus resources and get yourself in range and in line to fire cannonballs at your opponents. Scoring a hit against your opponent, or just ramming them if you prefer, gains you infamy and causes your opponent to add a damage to their discard pile. One interesting detail about the Seas of Havoc is that ships and cannonballs alike wrap around from one side of the board to the other. But be careful, collisions with rocks will cause you to take a damage card yourself. These damage cards are like the curse cards in Dominion, which clutter up your deck and are worth negative one point at the end of the game. If you play a card that matches a flag you own, you immediately get that corresponding benefit. Take a resource, scrap a card, draw a card, or take another turn. If you play one of your captain cards, you get to perform some kind of cool, unique ability, like stealing a resource from a nearby opponent, or buying a market card during the C phase which goes into your hand immediately. The C phase goes on until all players are out of cards. At this point, you draw back up to four cards in your hand and go back to the island phase. Gameplay goes on like this, alternating from island phase to C phase until the point when the last damage card is dealt to a player. Players will then finish that last round and scores will be totaled from each player's current infamy, their gained cards, any ship upgrades they have purchased, minus those damage cards. The player with the most infamy wins. This is a game that I was very impressed with as soon as I opened the box. Despite my copy being a preview copy, the components and the art were incredibly nice and my only disappointment was with these cannonballs. I'm wondering if perhaps they could be spherical for the final version. I'm also wondering if there's a possibility that these ships could be more 3D so you could stand them up and still clearly identify the orientation of the ship, which is extremely important in this game. Beyond that, however, the player boards, the card quality, the fantastic art, the unique ship designs, all of that is really top-notch and exceeded my expectations for sure. As for the gameplay, it's all very intuitive once you get the hang of it. Take some island actions and then play cards during the C phase until you're out of cards and then do it all again. I found the multiplayer experience really fun and lighthearted, and player turns were quick and easy to resolve. One of the most fun moments in this game is when a player gets to use their unique ship or captain ability, usually to another player's chagrin. The solo experience is similarly fun and rewarding, and in this mode you're fighting against two or three other ships which comprise the ghost fleet. This AI opponent will take island spots, vie for the first player token, purchase market cards, claim flags, and even get stronger as the game progresses. They're a formidable opponent to play against, and I love that playing this game solo is just as quick and easy as playing multiplayer. And those are my first impressions of Seas of Havoc by Rock Manor Games. This is a fantastic game that combines some of my favorite mechanisms, and it's definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of deck builder games, worker placement games, or grid-based combat. Thank you to Rock Manor Games for this preview copy, and thank you all so much for checking out my preview. Let me know in the comments what your favorite pirate or nautical themed game is. And in the meantime, have a wonderful week, take care, and happy gaming. Bye.